Hi and welcome back. I am Kamal Vij and this video is about the sixth module of my book Let's Learn 3G in 10 days. The topic here is protocols and interfaces. Let us begin by looking at the general protocol model for UTRAN interfaces. This model is applicable to IUB, IUR and IU interfaces. Vertically, the picture is divided into two planes, control plane and user plane. Control plane includes application protocols which are pure signaling protocols. Among other things, they are used for setting up and releasing the bearers for user plane data transfer. User plane protocols define the frame structure for transmission of user plane traffic on various UTRAN interfaces. Horizontally, this picture is divided into two main layers, radio network layer and transport network layer. Now all UTRAN specific functions are described by radio network layer and transport network layer only describes the transport technology. The transport technology could be either ATM or IP. 3GPP has defined these layers to be completely independent of each other. The control plane includes application protocols like RANAP, RANSAP and NBAP which are pure signaling protocols. Let us discuss just one or two functions of each protocol here. Let us begin by NBAP. NBAP or Node B application part is used on IUB interface and it is used for cell configuration management and radio link management. Using NBAP, Node B informs RNC about current transmitted and received power levels, which is the basis for uplink and downlink load calculations. RANAP is the common signaling protocol used on both IUCS and IUPS interfaces. Its main functions are RAB management and supervision of IU connection, which connects RAN with core network. Radio network subsystem application part, RANSAP, is the signaling protocol on IUR interface. Its main function is to support inter-RNC soft handover related signaling and serving RNC relocation. Other than these protocols, for fixed interfaces, we also have radio protocols, which describe the communication between UE and RNC. Let us have a look at user planes, user plane radio protocols and try to understand how user traffic travels between UE and RNC. Now user plane could be anything like voice, video, streaming, FTP file, web browsing or any multimedia application data. In this example, we can see how an IP packet gets transmitted to UE in downlink. Okay, when SGSN sends and RNC receives an IP packet, first of all PDCP layer compresses the IP header and passes it to RLC layer, radio link control layer. Then RLC layer segments this big IP packet into small blocks. In this example of IP packet transmission, the RLC layer stores, the, stores these RLC blocks until it receives a positive acknowledgement from UE. RLC layer also performs ciphering and after that it passes this data block to MAC layer. MAC layer performs functions like transport format selection. In simple words, MAC decides instantaneous bit rates. Now based on selected transport format, one or more transport blocks are given to physical layer. This transaction happens once every TTI transmission time interval. In release 99, TTI can be 10, 20, 40 or 80 milliseconds for DCA channels. Now along with transport blocks, MAC layer also passes a transport format indicator TFI to physical layer which describes the decision made by MAC layer. The decisions made by MAC layer are implemented by physical layer. So that brings us to the physical layer. Physical layer performs channel coding, interleaving, spreading, scrambling, modulation and finally transmits, transmits data on layer 1 air interface using WCDMA slots and radio frames. It also adds a CRC bits which helps UE to detect whether it has been correctly received or not. The RLC layer of UE sends a negative or positive acknowledgement which can cause retransmission. So we can summarize the whole procedure by two points. Number one, Node B does not play any decision making role in release 99. The decisions are made by RNC. Number two, retransmissions are based on layer two RLC protocol, which is terminated between UE and RNC. Well, we have been looking at UTRAN so far. Let us zoom out and analyze the signaling between UE 
and core network. The protocols between UE and core network are called non-access stratum protocols or NAS protocols. In this example, the NAS messages are transported with the help of access stratum protocols like RRC and RANAP. These access networks could have been from 2G also. Even then, the structure of the NAS message remains the same. For example, a location updating request message or a paging request message does not change its structure depending on the underlying, uh, underlying access network. In module 9, we will have a look at how NAS connection between UE and core network gets established. I hope you like this short introduction to UMTS protocols. Now let's take a short break and meet again in 7th module. See you there.